Hello and welcome to The Car Diaries and a rather exciting episode for me as I can finally introduce you to my new business. So I've started a business alongside Graham Davidson Racing who's racing and won the British GT Championship earlier this year selling and sourcing high-end cars. So behind me here we have a bit of a unicorn, the Rolls-Royce Phantom Series 2 Coupe and it's a car which I'm delighted to say that we are actually selling. So we've got the car today and we're going to take you along for the ride and show you what this car is all about, talk you through the specification and talk you through why this car is quite so special. So starting off with the front end of the car and as you can see we have the Spirit of Ecstasy here of course features on every single Rolls Royce production car of the moment. We've got a massive chrome front grille, we've then got the Series 2 front end which has been changed quite a bit from the Series 1, just little tweaks but you can definitely tell the difference and you can see those LED daytime running lights on as well there. Now this car is finished in the diamond black paintwork which I think looks absolutely mega and is a definite baller specification along with these white wall tyres and those massive gloss black diamond turns 21 inch wheels. Now this is you have to remember a coupe as well which is quite frankly ridiculous. The car is five and a half metres in length and it's got these properly cool suicide doors which as you can see reveal the cream leather interior with black hides and the black upper dashboard section. Another cool feature before I close the door actually as well is for Scotland Rolls Royce umbrella. You need one of these because it's always raining. In fact that's it just coming on at the moment but yeah Rolls Royce umbrella which as you can see has the logo on the end of it here which is really cool. One on each side you just fire it in here push it in and if the umbrella is wet, there's even a fan in there which will dry the umbrella for you as well. So it's got a heating element to it which dries the umbrella when you insert it in there. As we walk around the car, you see we've got the chrome windows around and the chrome door handles. And it's difficult to take in the sheer size and mass of this car. As I say, it's five and a half metres in length, which for a coupe is just astronomical. So another cool function of the Phantom Coupe is we have a split tailgate which means nice and easy access if you're popping any shopping in there. Massive boot as you'd expect, but that falls completely flat and I can just chill here. So you could, you know, have your car parked here doing some fishing off the pier. You could be having a barbecue, toasting some marshmallows, whatever you fancy, you know, you've got this tailgate. Um, and yeah, this can hold up to 150 kilograms, so it tells me. So. I'm just managing to sit in that and no more due to my new ripped physique. Been hitting the gym recently. Don't know if you can tell, probably not. Matt's laughing. So yeah, um, and that soft close as well there, which is a really, really nice touch. We've also got lots of chrome working on around the rear here. We've got the chrome around the rear lights. We've got the visible exhaust tailpipes, which I think are a must on a Rolls Royce. There's quite a lot of cars out there without them. I don't think it looks right without them. I think it's a must have. And you'll also notice we've got these side lights on the front and rear of the car and that is due to the absolute humongous size of the car, um, five and a half metres in length as I say. Um, so it's just to yeah, essentially make people aware that you're about if they didn't already see you. Um, and yeah, driving it down here we can uh, assure you that it gets some serious, serious attention. This car's got a hell of a lot of road presence. It is the size of a yacht on the road um, and it would get about the same amount of attention as driving a yacht on the road, I would say. Um, it's a unicorn, you don't see many of them around um, and you're never going to see many of them around as there was only 250, were we saying that? Um, Rolls Royce Phantom Series 2 coupes um, built, um, so very, very limited. And this is a fantastic opportunity to purchase a fine example with a fantastic service history as well. So without further ado, let's jump inside the car and talk you through the interior and then take it out and see how this thing handles and drives on the roads of Scotland. Well, the horses like the roads. So yeah, welcome to the interior of our glorious Rolls Royce Phantom Series 2. So for any of you that are wondering, Series 2 versus Series 1, what is the difference? Well, there has been a number of tweaks most important one I would say in terms of functionality is the infotainment system 
in the Series 2 is leap years ahead of the Series 1. Don't worry about the noise, Matt, did you hear that? You probably didn't hear it because it's such a nice, quiet, tranquil soundtrack, but it's uh, a warning popping up on the screen to tell me that it may be icy, so yeah, let's take this pretty steady, <laughs> I would say. And we shall head out in this beautiful big beast. So out on the road in the Series 2 Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupe. So what is this car and what's it all about? So Rolls-Royce initially had launched obviously the Phantom back in 2003-2004. They then decided to make a Coupe version of their largest car. Um, so an equally big car but the two door with suicide doors which I think is pretty cool. They then brought out a drop head version um, which was the convertible essentially and then they decided to launch the Series 2 version which is what this car is which I believe is the rarest of all three. Now the Rolls-Royce Wraith that's currently out at the minute does not replace the Phantom Coupe as the Wraith is essentially a Coupe version of the Ghost if that makes sense and you're still following whereas this as it says in the name is a Coupe version of the Phantom which is a far bigger car than the Ghost in saloon form that is as well as Coupe obviously. So yeah there's never been a new Phantom Coupe, they might very well bring one out with the um, the eighth generation of the Phantom. However for the time being this is all we have. Coming through a nice wee forest section here and we do need to remember this is rear wheel drive albeit it's got a very competent traction control system. The torque is very much mid-range in this car, so it's got 720 newton meters of torque, um, albeit it's from the naturally aspirated 6.75 litre Rolls-Royce V12 engine block, which produces just over 450 horsepower, I think it's 453 brake horsepower to be exact. And that propels you from 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds, which, let's remember, for a car that is over 2.5 tonnes, is pretty good going and it will go all the way to its electronically limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. Yeah, as we come around the corner here, I'm going to put my foot down a little bit and hopefully you'll be able to see this torque. And that's 60 miles per hour just like that. It's very, very quick. Stupidly quick actually for the size of the car, you would just never expect a car like this to move so quickly and people generally up here anyway in Scotland love it you get so many thumbs up and people looking taking second looks taking photos um, because ah, oh, it's just got so much presence when you see it coming towards you particularly with this car finishing the diamond black paintwork um, with the, the chrome big chrome front grille um, it looks very very menacing coming towards you now as we know the Rolls Royces have not been built to be thrown around a racetrack or for perfect handling um, but the coupe version of the Phantom handles far better than the saloon. Here is someone pulling over to let us by. Thank you very much. Where's the hazards Matt? Uh, yeah, thank you. It's nice to be nice. Particularly when you're driving one of these. Um, so yeah, it's, it handles far far better than the, uh, the saloon equivalent um, and the reason for that obviously is it is a, a shorter wheelbase. Um, so it's a bit more dynamic uh, and I'm laughing because yeah it's still five and a half meters long so it's not exactly a, a sporting pedigree as such um, but yeah it, it handles surprisingly well for the for the sheer size of the, the thing but you know of course this car isn't about being a great handling b-road racer it's about a luxury cruiser a luxury GT car it's got ample room we've got masses of space behind us there um, to seat four large adults very comfortably. We've got a fantastic sized rear boot as well, which you can get, you know, m a month's worth of clothes in if you were going to tour the continent with it. And for eating up motorway miles, I generally couldn't think of a better, more comfortable car. It rides beautifully. It's like falling into a fairy tale dream where you're lying on a cloud of puppies and nice soft furry things why are you laughing Matt that's what it feels like that's the best way to describe it it's yeah it's uh, it just sort of glides along it's 
it's stunning. And even if you hit a bit of a bump, it just absorbs it so well. It's, it's not like anything else in the road. Now we're coming into a little town here. So this is one of the perhaps not so nice parts, okay, of the car. And that is the sheer size. So I'm going to flick it into reverse here. And we're going to, Matt's looking very nervous, try and park against the curb. And I think that's pretty well done, Matt. What do you think? Yeah. Parallel parts. And the reason I managed to do that quite comfortably is it's got a 360 degree camera. So you've got an aerial view of the car. You have cameras in the front of the car, cameras in the rear of the car. Um, and it's got front and rear parking sensors as well. So that whole helps the humongous size of the car feel that bit, a little bit easier to, to drive and to, to handle. Another cool thing, whilst we're in the driver's seat, is if I open the door, if you can't be bothered closing the door, particularly as it's suicide doors and they go all the way out there, just hold the button in up here, and the door will close itself. Just make sure you do not have your hand trapped in there because it closes quite aggressively and it could chop your hand off. In conclusion, I think this car is sure to be a future classic. Not just down to the fact that it's been built in such limited numbers, but it's the sheer audacity of this car. I mean, it's extreme in every sense. It's five and a half meters in length. It's only got two doors. It's got four seats. But up front, it's got a massive naturally aspirated V12 powerhouse. And in an age of increasing global pressures about you know how much we're polluting and everyone going green, nothing like this is ever going to be built again. It's an absolute unicorn and I think, you know, this car, nothing will or ever has competed with it. It stands in a league of its own and if any manufacturer tries to build an ultra luxury, modern coupe like this, they're just never going to be able to compete. Rolls Royce is Rolls Royce and as far as I'm concerned, this is the pinnacle of Rolls Royce and the pinnacle of the spirit of ecstasy. Now this car, as we say, is available for sale at our new business, the Auto Lounge. So please get in touch if you do have any questions and we'll look forward to delivering this to a very lucky person's driveway in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Cool, ready. Hello and welcome to the Car Diaries and a rather exciting day for me as I can finally talk to you about my new business, which is the Auto Lounge. So the Auto Lounge specialise... Oh, hello doggy. <laughs> hello. Thank you. Let me go back and bump. Is the sound filming? No, uh, not yet. The sound is not filming. What? Thanks for watching, me too shoot. Thanks for watching, me too shoot. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and make sure to give this photo <laughs>